Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to Discover 2016, everybody. HPE's big customer event. This is theCUBE, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. Kyle Green is back, he's the Director of Enterprise Storage Solutions at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and he's joined by Jim Thomas, who's the Director of IT Operations at Pella Windows. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Kyle, Thank welcome you. back, good to Appreciate see you. Appreciate it. Thank you. So Pella Windows, tell us, what's, what's the company all about? All right, Pella is actually a privately owned uh, window door company headquartered in Pella, Iowa. Um, one of the leading manufacturers of windows and doors in North America. You, strong, strong heritage. We just celebrated 90 years in business, make an incredibly good product, uh, great people at the company, small town environment, so just a great company to I work I think for. I have a Pella door. Well, I, but we I can don't sign you up for more. But I don't have Pella <laughs> windows, and I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm not happy with my windows. Well, we can take care of that. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, I'm not sure I can take care of that, but <laughs> that was a big project. But, uh, okay, so your role as Director of IT Ops, you know, maybe describe that a little bit. Sure, I have responsibility for IT operations, infrastructure, and information security. So we have a unique situation. I think Pella will define strategic relationships differently than what you would historically. So the way we go to market and the way we attack IT is through strategic partners, HP being one of them. Um, we are pretty much all in as long as it can meet our core fundamentals. We would rather commit to a partner and a relationship. And we get back to that relationship. Um, and folks ask why we do this, and the reality is we get so much more out of it. But as we talk through this, we have several things over the years where we've been actively engaged with HP or another partner. This, well. this is an interesting topic because there's, there's an age old discussion within the IT world right. is you just, sort of beat your supplier down for the best price, or do you try to partner and get more value? Kyle, I mean, you must have this, this discussion with customers all the time, all right? All the time. And of course, yes. you know, we live in this world where prices are always dropping, everybody's doing, trying to do more with less, so you can understand that. Right. But how does this conversation go? It, it, Jim's a great example of how we'd like it to go, and that is, you know, we, we get to customers, regardless, you may not, Jim's not the largest customer we have, but Jim is strategic to us because he uses many of the things we do strategically, and he counts on us to help him with his business. He's like many customers, though. He can't resist or turn down an opportunity to explore a cost-effective solution from other vendors, but he weighs that against the relationship, which is what we'd love people to do as they match in. Jim sits on many of our advisory councils and, again, plays an important role in our strategy and what we're trying to do to solve other customers like Jim, uh, big or small and uh, he plays a very important role there. But it's human nature, right? We all want a deal, right? Sure. <laughs> you want the best deal, the best discount, so how do you get through that and how do you quantify the value to your business of a partnership where you may not always have the lowest price, but there's other value? The good news about Pella is being around 90 years, we're not worried about next quarter. We're doing things to the, the family that's engaged in the, in the business, they want it around for another 90 years. So how do you do that? You make long-term investments. So my investments with my partners, although they'll view it the other way around, they pay back greater than the better price I'll get. My team is, is extremely good at delivering and executing. So when we sign up with a promotion, we have delivered. And so the reality is, over time, I get far more back than we put in. And whether it is through professional services, relationships, when I'm in a bind, I can call folks in the organization that I have deeper contacts that could help me out. So it's astounding how much we get back, and it's so hard for me sometimes to understand why people don't choose to invest that. I could go buy the cheapest and fight for the cheapest price every time, but the value is the long-term approach. Let's talk some more about that. So I'm inferring when something goes wrong, you know who to call, that person knows you, they're going to respond to you, they know your situation, you're going to remediate more quickly. Is that, a, is that an example and other others that you can share? It's not just that, it's also uh, an engagement at another level. I mean, whether if it happens to be storage and we're talking about 3PAR, we can talk about what are we trying to solve as a business. Um, I, I rate somewhere down here on the dollars I spend as the top customers at HP. But 
I rate up here is, am I willing to talk about where we've had success? So we'll talk about the issues we're seeing, we'll talk about the challenges in our business, and we'll talk about how that matters and where we go forward. So it's really about, I'll say, paying it forward. So, uh, you're sort of, you're, you're, in, you're in a situation where you're creating more value than you're extracting. Absolutely. And you're getting the benefit of that. Um, so, we'll talk about what's driving your business. What, what's going on in the uh, window? Well, the good business. news is the housing market's back. Um, there was a five year period there that, uh, if you can ever want to watch new housing starts go from roughly two million <laughs> down to 300,000, not the most comfortable time. Now, we, we, we have a replacement, we have commercials, so we stayed strong. Um, and being privately held, it is a strong company on core foundation. So, really there. But the housing market's coming back. We're strong in the commercial space, continuing to grow that area. Um, looking at things like home automation, so shades in your home. You start talking about automation around doors, locked, unlocked, windows, open, closed. So a lot of things that are really happening there. Uh, our goal is we've historically been an innovator in our industry, want to continue to be there. So we're continuing to find ways uh, to, to deliver both through our traditional products and how we enhance those so going forward. So smartness coming into the home, data coming into your business in a big way. It will be. Um, the challenge is trying to work through the landscape and the maturing markets of home automation. You have security companies, home automation services. How do you fit and meld within the ecosystems, but still provide the unique value of your product in those you solutions? You seem to be very in tune with your, your business, maybe more so than, than most you know, smaller, relatively smaller IT shops. Um, is that the cultural thing? Is that the nature of the private, privately held company? Part of it's I'm old. <laughs> yeah, you've been around okay, for a while. I've been, okay, there, yeah, so I've been with the company 18 years um, and, and have enjoyed every minute, but the reality is I have an opportunity to engage throughout the business. I have an opportunity to engage with my partners. And so numerous teams I set in across the business has really enabled me to have a lot of insight. Um, it's just been a great ride. Yeah, so you're looking to the future. Your company's looking to the future. I mean, today it's, I presume, pretty small as the percentage of homes that are actually instrumented, but, but when you guys sit back and look at the sort of your strategic plans, do you see that as a real tailwind for you going forward? And, and we think it's going to grow slowly. I mean, home automation is, it's, it's, you've got the do it for me group and the do it yourself group. And they're just kind of picking up at different paces. New construction, do it for me, put it in when it's in place. Um, for us, it's learning how to behave. We're a traditional manufacturer. Now we're talking about consumer electronics right. when you're talking some of this. So it's a different game. So we're being very cautious because our brand is critical to us. Um, we've built a reputation around our brand and we want to make sure that we protect, guard, and deliver on that brand promise. So there's so, a lot of going into it. Kyle, from HPE's perspective, how, how did the relationship with Pella Window evolve? I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's a, it's a relatively small, small company, Jim was saying. Well, we're down here on the spend, but we're up here on the service levels that we're, we're getting and the value that we're right, getting. Right. How does that all work? Well, I think it goes back to the things Meg talks about. It's this idea economy today, right? It started traditional IT's purchase, right? There was a need for storage, right? There's a need for servers, and, and we courted Jim like many other vendors would. But as that relationship grew, now you're back to what's next. And Jim has ideas, but he's got a strong brand. And we feel like you know, that's something HPE can bring to the table is looking out for your brand or helping you protect against that un, uh, unpredictability, if you will, in the market. But you're leading that charge as well and dragging us with you. Mm -hmm. And that's where the synergy comes into play. It's not about the servers or the storage anymore. Uh, although those are things he buys and, and uses in the business. It's about how to protect his brand, how to help him grow the business as to what's next. And we don't understand his business, he does. So collaboratively, we, we really get a lot out of the partnership there. So what does the plumbing look like? Take us inside, paint a picture of what's, what's underneath. Well, actually, um, the core, the heart of what we're running is HP's uh, Superdome X. We actually, although my team refuses to call that, we still call it by the code name Dragonhawk. <laughs> we had shirts done. Uh, we actually had them on last year, um, nice Hawaiian shirts. Um, so very unique. We had one of the first 100 units that came out of production actually said in our data centers, we tested it, evaluated it. It runs the core of our ERP database. And um, our product, you would think windows and doors are not incredibly complex, but when you consider the fact that you can order any window on any quarter size increment, different glass options, different colors, different, 
we uh, estimate somewhere in the combinations of eight octillion. So an incredibly, we have to generate a bill of material for every window ordered. We don't pull from bill of materials, we create one. So the demand on the processing, the storage. So we've got the HP Superdome X. We're now back ending it. Currently I'm back ending it with a actually a competitor's flash storage. But we are now looking very aggressively at three par. We have a three par in our test dev environment. Um, four years ago it was the right decision for us. Um, we needed the speed, we needed the performance. We just couldn't get what we needed four years ago. Right. That landscape has radically changed. I think the HP storage has come along. They're leading performance is there. The software has matured significantly. Um, they're obviously leading in that space. We've got one unit in our test dev environment. We're looking at replacing our production environment with three par sometime in the next six months. You're talking months. about an all flash system or a head We flash are all flash yeah. today. And actually, I was one of the folks that would really talk about all flash, at least for my critical databases, four years ago. That was very unique four years ago. It was. Um, well, I'll tell you, we were right there with it. We predicted back in uh, 2009 that by 2014, the high spin speed disks would be dead. Now, we were a little early, but back then, that was a pretty, pretty bold. Pretty people bold thought we were crazy. Sounds like you were crazy too. Oh, I'm still crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we're good there. So, okay, so. Um, what else is going on in, in your infrastructure? So Oracle Database, is that what you're running? We run Oracle's ERP suite okay. um, on HP hardware. Um, I think our challenge is continuing to go forward is how do we consolidate and pull? I've got what will eventually face us around consumer data. What do we do? How do we handle that? Where are we going to store it if we store it? Um, obviously folks are very concerned about their privacy and making sure that, that we handle that. Um, We've got things around shop floor automation as we continue to get smarter factories that will generate far more there. Um, video. Um, we're looking at solutions right now that would, how do we facilitate our in-field service? So how do we make things in the field easier if a consumer is calling us with a service issue? How do we solve it quicker? Better information. If we have to make a call, we have to be there with the right parts at the right time with them. So how do we get that? So we're looking at how do we even leverage video from that capability. So rapidly changing on a lot of fronts. Interesting, a lot, lot going on. And you run security as well? Are you the CISO or de facto <laughs> if, CISO? Or? Yeah, we have smaller titles than that, yeah, so yeah. yes. How, how, how big is the IT organization? How many people? We have a couple hundred IT folks. Okay, so it's, it's substantial. I mean, it's not, mm -hmm. not a tiny shop, but, it's, but you, you're in charge of security. Uh -huh. Do you, what's the conversation with the board about security or the owners? You know, we've company. had a very good, um, our board is extremely strong. Um, it's about a risk management platform though. It's about understanding your risk portfolio. So when we look at who we are, we do know that I don't have a ton of credit card information. So we're on the lowest level of PCI compliance because most of our transactions are not handled. And we handle that very clearly. We are privately held, so I don't have a lot of uh, government assistance or <laughs> SEC <laughs> assistance, those types of things. Mm -hmm. And I have very little health care. Okay, and not surprisingly, not a huge amount of trade secrets. But we still have the responsibility that the business has to run. So we take our risk base, and we've actually followed the SANS model, and we're really attacking it at the right level of investment for what we're doing. So we're picking and choosing partners. Um, we've leveraged a couple of other partners. We work closely with Verizon on making sure that we're doing the right things. We're talking a little bit with the HP security team, but really trying to make the right investments for our risk portfolio. Right, I love that answer. I mean, because uh, you know, guy in your position's got to talk to the board or at least communicate what you did. It sounds like you got a, a pretty clear perspective on that. Um, last question, what are you going to take away from HPE Discover 2016? What are you going to bring back to Pella? You know, it was a great trip out here. For me, it was fun, um, but the reality is it's relationships. With what we do, I have folks that are far smarter than I am that work for me, and that's a really good thing. Um, but for me, it's about building the relationships. So I had not had as strong relationships over the last couple years with the storage team that I wanted to. Had some great opportunity to spend some time with some of the storage team. I really understand where they're going, what they're doing, the product group, that other area, but also the rest of the organization. So it's just continuing to build our relationship. It's important for me to stay relevant 
in HP's eyes. Right. And the only way we do that is we tell them what we need, we tell them what we're doing, and we deliver on what we tell them we're going to do. All right, Kyle, we'll give you the last word. Put the bumper sticker on yeah. uh, Discover uh, 16. Uh, Discover 2016 has been terrific, and I think it's echoed the market adoption that we're getting. Uh, so not only from our customers like Jim, but the market share data that continues to pour out uh, where we're taking market share from our competitors. And it just tells us that we're on the right track. It validates the enthusiasm and our challenge is to get that word out and get in front of more and more people. And Jim fortunately plays a big role in that with us. Uh, even though he may not be the biggest one in our, uh, you know, the portfolio, he's extremely valuable in helping us shape our message and get out to folks. All right, Jim and Kyle, thanks very much for Bet. coming to theCUBE. Appreciate Thank your time. You. All right, that's a wrap here. Uh, keep, it, keep it right here, we'll be back up this short break, but go to crowdchat.net slash HPE Discover. You'll see a, essentially a transcript in the CrowdChat of all the CUBE interviews. Go to siliconangle.tv, siliconangle.com, wikibon.com for all the research. Keep right there, this is the CUBE. We're live from Las Vegas, we'll be right back. <laughs>